So here I've got a, another Cyrus power amplifier. This is the power model, and this was one of the early uh, configurable stereo or mono units. Uh, and it's set for operation with the PSXR here. Uh, and we can see it looks like it's powered up, um, but in actual fact, the, the power button here is not responsive. It's just sort of stuck in this state um, and not working. Um, has been looked at before by someone else, um, so we're not sure what we're going to find when we open it up. But uh, let's uh, get the covers off and we'll see see what we find inside. Inside then, and we can immediately see that uh, whoever has been in here before has done a bit of butchering. Um, and there's obviously been a capacitor down here that's blown. Um, we can see it's innards just on the side of the big capacitor there and various other bits around the board there. And whatever's been going on, we've got a capacitor here that's stuck up in mid-air, big long leads on it. And then there's a through-hole diode that's patched in here. This has been done because the, the board's been chewed up. Um, just a mess down there. You know, normally when I see this kind of stuff, I really just want to walk away because you're, you know, dealing with the electrical problems is one thing, but dealing with someone else's mess is another. Um, Anyway, let's say there's a few other areas that we can look at here where there's some funny business going on. So here's another bit here, um, and these capacitors have been replaced. And, and they're, they're actually good quality capacitors, so I can't really complain about that. But again, some of the traces in the board have been ripped up in the process, and uh, so again, it's just another bit of a mess around here. Um, one of the other things, an interesting item on the output transistors we're going to take a look at here. So here's our output transistors, and we can see some signs of activity here because we've got some heatsink compound on the cable here. Um, uh, it doesn't look like they've been soldered, so it's hard to know what's been happening here just yet. Uh, the transistor on the right looks all quite normal. Um, the one on the left, the insulator between the the, uh, heat, the transistor and the chassis is missing. All we can see is heatsink compound, but there's no insulator there. Now, the collector of the transistor is sitting at the one of the supply rails, whether it be positive or negative. And so that is just uh, shortened off to the chassis. Um, and I suspect the amp will, you know, detect that and just not just not power up. Uh, I don't think that's our main problem. I think there's multiple problems in here, but we'll see. And that, you know, there's various other like missing screws and just, just you know, as I say, whoever's been in here, uh, um, well, Anyway, so first thing I'm going to do is we'll configure it for uh, to operate without the PSXR, and then we'll just be able to focus on this unit on its own, and we'll we'll uh, go around check some of the supplies and see how we got on. There's definitely a smell of something going on in here, and obviously we've got this mess that we don't know whether that's contributing or um, what's going on. So uh, anyway, let's uh, let's say uh, reconfigure to standalone operation and we'll see where we go from there. Right and let's uh, reconfigure for standard operation and it's it's very easy uh, to go from PSXR to you know internal power supply. We swap the swap the uh, yellow and blue and we swap the red and grey and that puts it into its uh, uh, standard mode of operation so let's just swap them. Right, so I've swapped these uh, connections over so we're running off the internal supply now. And if I power up, we see the same greenish light. I think I think actually what's happening is the green and red LEDs are lit simultaneously. So it's giving us a kind of yellowish colour there. Um, but the button's still completely unresponsive. So I'm, I'm very... I've, I've got an idea what's going on here. Um, what we'll do is we'll... Uh, disconnect this ribbon cable so that we will we'll look at this front panel in isolation and see how it behaves on its own. Right, I've uh, just connected, removed the ribbon cable here and we're connected to a bench power supply just be via these clips here. Uh, and if I power up the bench supply, uh, we see the same situation. And I can see on the supply I'm pulling 400, 408 milliamps. So that's a lot of current. Uh, and what's happened here is that this uh, this microcontroller here, uh, obviously a Cyrus specific program part, I can feel the heat in it there, um, that's dead. And uh, I see this in the Cyrus 3 and uh, 
uh, this this uh, power amp's kind of based on the Cyrus 3 and I think this was just the early programmable parts you know the the units before this um, they didn't have any programmable parts and it, these just fail over time and they're kind of sensitive as well um, and generally this is terminal you know we can't we can't uh, get a replacement for that it's uh, a well it's way out of date but Cyrus simply won't supply it uh, and it's a specialist part for them so that gets us in a tricky situation and it's a shame because there's, you know there's the rest of this stuff we can uh, probably get back into working order um, so see, normally we'd give up at this point uh, but what I'm going to do today is we'll uh, actually force the amplifier on you know there, there's a control line comes down this ribbon that tells the amplifier to turn on so if we uh, go and force that line just by tying it to 5 volts and we'll then power up the amplifier circuitry and we'll do a quick check just to see if this stuff's working uh, and then you know we'll think about next steps after that but let's set that up and see how we go right so I've hardwired the unit on now uh, you can see the front panel's completely removed uh, and it took me a little while to get that to work because um, I found here's a dead transistor here I found on the, one of the current sources so that was preventing it from turning on and then of course, the missing insulator from the transistor. Uh, there's a resistor between the chassis and zero volts on on these units, and so that transistor being shorted out to the case just popped that resistor. You know, there was some smoke there, so that uh, missing insulator obviously happened when uh, this uh, was at the previous the previous person that looked at this. And when I say previous person, it was a, you know, this was a service organisation that uh, dealt with this. It wasn't, you know, someone having a look at it. It was, you know, a proper service centre. Uh, and this is the kind of thing that's going on. Anyway, as I say, the unit is now uh, powered up uh, under its own steam without the front panel. And if I connect the loudspeakers here, we can see we've, you know, the amplifiers working uh, just fine on its own. So that's uh, that's encouraging. That's good. All this stuff's working here. You maybe need some, you know, probably be some dry caps and that we need to deal with, but uh, it's functioning. Um, so it seems a real shame, you know, to to junk this because this controller here is uh, dead. And so I think I'm I'm going to make a little project to this, you know. Uh, it's a power amp. It's not got a lot of control stuff going on in here. There's not any volume controls or input selectors or things like that. The job that this controller is doing is fairly straightforward. Um, you know, it's dealing with the on and off. It's dealing with the control with the PSXR. It looks for faults and, and these kind of things. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, let's say we'll make a little project out of this uh, just as a just as a one-off. And so I'm going to use an Arduino and we'll maybe just mount the Arduino in here, something like that, and uh, uh, you know we'll wire it up. Um, we'll, we'll take this, take the original part out. We'll wire this up, and we'll write a bit of code for the Arduino to do the control of the front panel and uh, deal with some of these, uh, uh, you know, control lines, etc., that go onto the main board. Um, so we'll go and do that. We'll make a start on on uh, connecting this up. I'm gonna, uh, you know, put a put a little plank PCB in here and then uh, we'll solder the Arduino onto that so this will just get screwed in um, where the original PCB goes and that will remain and then we'll just wire into the main circuitry and of course at a later date if we get a if we manage to get a program part Cyrus program part we can always just go back and change that uh, but for now to avoid you know completely binning this then uh, we'll, we'll uh, do this and uh, see how we go on all right, so I've got my uh, Arduino board uh, installed here. Turn the, turn the board out of the front panel assembly. We've removed the original microcontroller and then uh, got this uh, little board patched in here and it's wired up. And I've done the basic code. Uh, so if we look at our LEDs now, and if we uh, apply power to the rear panel, then we're getting a, a red LED as you would expect uh, at this point. And if we hit the power button, we get a green LED, and we've also got our mute uh, LED for three seconds. And then you heard the relays click there to bring in the uh, the outputs.
so that's working fine. But it's only the only the very basic setup so far. There's a bunch more stuff to be doing. Um, so let's go and take. We'll take a quick look at the code, and then we'll look at what uh, what we've still got to do. So here's the the basic code uh, so far, uh, and we're just setting a bunch of variables here, and then we we set what the different pins on the Arduino are doing. Um, and then we basically read the power button um, and whenever that goes low um, if if we're in the off state and it goes low then we we uh, turn the thing on and uh, there's a sort of I've put five second delay in here now before we turn on the output relays that five seconds just to let all your DC supplies and offsets and everything settle so so that you don't get a, a thump in your loudspeakers when you turn this thing off on. Uh, and then the same routine for turning off, uh, just detect the button press and they, you know, flip the states of these things. So it's very simple, um, but there is a bunch more things to do. So let's go and take a look at uh, what we still need to cover. Looking at the bigger picture of what we need from a microcontroller then, and we can see we've got a whole bunch of inputs here. And, th and this is why we need a microcontroller, just because there's a whole bunch of uh, stuff going on. Um, so the you know the on off is the simple one so we've kind of covered that with our button press but we need to take inputs from the stereo mono switch from the balanced unbalanced switch and um, so we take those inputs and then we decide we've got some uh, relays on the outputs here that we need to drive um, so we look at those and decide what we're going to do um, and then there's a bunch of protection stuff that we're uh, kind of interested in here so we check for over current and over temperature. We check our power supplies are okay, and then there's a there's an AC uh, failure detect uh, that uh, basically switches everything off um, before the power supplies collapse. Um, if if the mains fails, and that again is just to minimise any DC thump in your loudspeakers. We've got uh, some inputs from the a PSXR as well and uh, depending on those we decide whether we're going to turn the PSXR on or uh, whether there's any kind of fault present there as well so we need to look at those lines and then there's the MC bus uh, as well so all of that's going on a whole bunch of stuff um, I'm going to choose not to implement the MC bus at this time uh, just because that's a that's something that runs in parallel with everything else and it just makes things a lot more complex. Um, so for what we're doing here, I'm just going to omit that and we'll concentrate on all the all the kind of critical stuff we need to do. So I'll uh, go ahead and uh, wire some of some of these lines up and uh, write a bit more code and then we'll see where see where we get then. All right, we're getting there now. Uh, I've written the rest of the code. We're all wired up and the front panels the, f the board is back in the front panel assembly, so that's all good. Uh, and uh, if we power up here, we get our mute for a few seconds, and then we burst into life here. And I've got a couple of channels running here. If I separate them, we'll see there's two channels there. Um, and you, if you note the level there, we're, we're just about one square off the top of the screen. And this is with a stereo signal. Um, now, a lot of the detail with a microcontroller is, you know, you, you have to look at the sequence of what's going on and, you know, you can't do this when you've done that and this kind of stuff. Um, and an example is the switches on the rear panel for uh, the uh, mono and stereo and the RCA, etc. Uh, if I toggle that now, nothing happens. Um, and that's deliberate, you know, what we need to do is power off and then we when we power back on it's going to look at the command from that switch and you can see that now we're in the mono mode and we've got half the level we had before and the two signals are in antiphase um, and that's exactly what we want for the bridge mode so that's working fine and you can see we've got our little LED in the front panel as well um, so that's all good um, so I think I'm almost ready to put this in the in the chassis and, and uh, you know put the covers back on um, I've tidied up the stuff that was a mess inside as much as I could anyway, given what we had. Um, so we'll take a quick look at that before we put the covers on and have a listen to what's going on. So this was the capacitor and diode arrangement that was hanging in mid-air in here when we uh, started to look at this. And I found that you know even the value and the voltage rating of that capacitor and the, the diode weren't 
equipped for the job. So, you know, not even the right parts were put in there. Um, and, they, you know, the mess of the board, there was actually a short on there that that was what caused the transistor to blow that we replaced earlier. So, you know, when I, when I replaced it and then powered up again, the same thing happened. Uh, that was just in PSXR mode. Uh, so I discovered that a little bit later. So that's all kind of tidied up and uh, this area is tidied up as well. Um, and we've replaced a few other capacitors that were in need of attention. Front panel's back in there, you can see our Arduino sitting in there quite tidily. Um, uh, what else happened? Yeah, there was a problem with a bias. Uh, it was kind of intermittent, so there was some, I think just a funny joint there that I had to deal with, but that uh, kept me amused for a little while. So, uh, been a wee bit of a, a project, but uh, I think we're there now. Um, so, we'll go and uh, put the rest of the screws in, put the cover on, and uh, see what it sounds like. I think I'm done then, we're all back together uh, and we're connected up to the PSXR. Um, so definitely a one-off project, this is not something you could do sensibly uh, on any kind of regular basis, it was just a bit of fun to recreate that microcontroller using the Arduino and, and obviously good to bring back to life an amp that uh, was essentially scrap and, and give it another life. Uh, uh, so let's have a listen, see how it goes. <laughs> 